How's it going everybody? My name's Stellar with Stellar Works. And today I'm going to be showing you guys pretty much my process. Um, talk about it. Making this knife here, modeled after the uh, Gerber knife that I have. Um, it's a pretty cool knife. This is the final result here. I'm going to be giving it out for free on Gumroad. I'll put the links in the description for it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to walk you guys through the process of that. So first off, I always like to start with the make tool with box cutter. Um, I always like starting off with grips when it comes to weapons or anything that's handheld. Um, and my best approach for it is usually the make box or make end gun or whatever. Because um, it's a really good tool. Uh, I know talking with uh, Master Xeon and Proxy over at uh, Team C told them that if you guys make any future changes, just make me a promise that you'll never delete my make boxes and my make end guns. So hopefully that'll stay true. Uh, I don't ever think it's going to stop or anything like that or disappear, but yeah, I always like getting in the, the rough shape of the handle at least on the things that I make with uh, Makebox and then going in and fine-tuning uh, fine it. Um, so yeah, and there I just added a quick bevel. Um, just make the edges look really nice. And here, starting off with the uh, blade, going back in with a good old make-in gun. Uh, getting the rough shape in, everything like that. Adding it some thickness and resetting the origin and setting it back on the grid so I can continue working with it. I did the same thing with the hand as well. Now, here uh, I use the hard op symmetry mirror to get that line going down the middle of the blade so that I could add a edge to it. Pretty stressful and easy, or stressless and easy way of uh, making a nice edge on a blade here. It with the sharpness and the bevel, highlight those edges. Really nice and simple way to do in that. Um, yeah, it's all about you know trying to match shapes with uh, reference, and you know, if you're able to do that, then it'll help sell the model to your viewers. Be like, yeah, you know, I see what he was trying to do, and he did it really well. Um, here, it's really sped up because I wanted to add the serrations on the blade, but. The, the way that I went about it wasn't the greatest, so I ended up scrapping that idea. As you'll see, I'll come in with a, a blue box and uh, add some geometry and just delete the serrated areas and give it another attempt. Um, if an idea doesn't work, you know, you can always revisit that idea later or you know immediately after, like in this case. So pretty much follow the same idea that I had the first go round with it. A slightly different approach afterwards. Um, you know, I set all the shapes up and instead of just cutting it out as they were, I ended up rotating them to the side as you'll see to get a more decent looking serrated edge on the blade compared to what I had before. Uh, if you have a knife, you know, look at it and you'll see that the serrations are kind of beveled in or chamfered in on one side versus the other and I was trying to attack it like that it didn't turn out the greatest result but I still thought it was a keeper so that's what I ended up going with now here I'm just going along selecting edges that I wanted to be, be marked and shaded right uh, cleaning up the geometry where there's a little bit of artifact issues, uh, fixing everything, making it look pretty decent, adding connecting geometry where it needed to be to make it look a little bit better, and then adding, uh, enabling weight on the bevel instead of angle kind of helped it look a lot better as well. Now here, going in and adding the 
details for the, the edge. It's got like a nice curve going on where you can tell where the machine kind of profiled it down to be a nice blade. So I'm going in and trying to replicate that as well. And the end result's pretty decent. I, I went ahead and shipped it the way it was. Uh, a lot of people could probably do it better than that, but that at the time felt like the best idea for me. So I go in and bevel that whole edge loop basically, give me some more geometry to play with, and then I just uh, sized it off and made it a lot uh, more wide on the, on the on the top versus down towards the bottom of the blade. Now that I've got all those lines marked, I decided to move on to do the little thumb, I guess you could call it like a latch. I'm not sure the exact, uh, you know, word for it, but that's what I ended up doing. Um, now on the blade in real life, it has this sort of kind of like staircase step design. So that's what I try to replicate here. It ended up working out pretty well. Uh, I like the end result on it. Now here I'm looking at the blade, getting ready to set it up because on most folding knives they have the outer shell handle and then the inner metal bit that the mechanism and everything is attached to. So that's what I was trying to replicate here. Uh, so the outer metal and then the inner part for that. Sorry about that, my dog decided he wanted to try to rip my headset off my head. But, uh, yeah, here's the, I guess you would call it like a lanyard attachment slash window breaker. Some knives have window breakers on the end of it, and I would assume this is to attach like a lanyard or some sort of thing like that. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of it is. And then, after I do that, I come in with a cylinder with a box cutter to cut that out, select the, the outer, cut it out, select the inner and cut it out to where it looks pretty decent. Uh, I got really lucky with the placement of the cylinders, how they all kind of lined up perfectly. Probably couldn't do that again if I tried. Um, also sorry about the amount of ums that I say fairly new to this. I uh, hope you guys are liking it so far. Uh, I definitely look forward to making more videos. Just basically going through my process. All that good stuff. Uh, there with that end gone cut I ended up just uh, cutting out the inside of the knife because uh, I was looking at my blade in my hand and I was like hey this is kind of empty in here for where the blade would go when it folds up. So that's what I ended up doing with that and just kind of tweaking the, uh, the mesh up to make it look a little bit better. But yeah, pretty, still pretty new to this. I've only been using Blender for, I'd say, six and a half, seven months. If I had to guess, uh, definitely not any longer than a year. Uh, beforehand, I haven't come off of any other 3D platform. Uh, short of chief architecture in school but yeah I'm quite enjoying this I know blender is really easy to learn for people who've never been on 3d before not so much for people who've come from like Maya or a 
other places like that. Uh, here I'm using some good old fashioned hard ops inserts to make some nice screws for the blade as well. I've always been told uh, after multiple attempts of trying to cheat adding screws in with Substance Painter uh, to go ahead and model real geometry because it ends up looking better in the end. Now here I'm using a plane to make the belt clip or pocket clip for the knife itself. Um, I thought this was a pretty ingenious way of doing it. I'd never tried something like this before and it popped into my head of a good way to try it. So I ended up modeling it, kind of giving it its rough shape, and then going in with a uh, in-gone cutter, with a uh, box cutter, and pretty much just giving it its shape that it needs. Uh, you'll see here, I end up doing it backwards. I end up cutting out the inside and realizing, hey, this isn't going to work. So instead, I I canceled that out and um, did it the way I had intended to on the first try. So you can get pretty decent shapes without having to do much effort when it comes to things such as like this clip or anything else. Um, the only real cleanup that I had to do was just this end bit here which really wasn't that hard at all but I had never tried something like that before and I really enjoyed the outcome of it so definitely don't be afraid to try new things with each project that you do because it'll only make you better in the end and I've discovered that sometimes by harsh, harsh reality of realizing hey I could have done this a new easy way instead I chose to do it a old hard way so Now here I realized that the clip was too far away from the handle of the knife and I had to go back in and delete some bevels, try and reshape it, uh, which it turned out pretty well with a couple of little minor adjustments. Probably could have been a way easier way of doing that, but I ended up managing doing it like this and yeah, I'll probably do something like this again if I mess up like that as well. So it's definitely always a way to recoup from a disaster like that. Now here, I'm cutting out the safety switch on the knife. I know in the reference picture you're not able to see it, but on the other side of the knife there's a, a safety switch that, well, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, when it's in one position, it won't allow you to open up the knife. It also uh, acts as the switch to allow you to close the knife when it's open, uh, and in the other position when it's locked. Nice little stair step design on this as well. As you'll see, um, I don't know if you'll be able to notice it, but in my final results after I substance paint it and do some animations with it, I realized when I applied the modifiers I didn't do it quite smart and didn't apply the mirror the right way to that part. <laughs> and uh, the stair step effect only, you know, happened on one side versus both sides like originally intended. Here I'm just refining the beginning of the blade 
getting ready to put in the uh, little cross pins that the blade stops against uh, just by marking that as my origin it allows me to get it to the exact spot that I want it put in that locking pin and I'll end up just duplicating it creating a cutter out of it and using hard ops to cut out the area that I wanted it's not really a detail that's needed unless you're getting in there in that model and looking at it up close and personal up in its business and everything but for the most part probably could have done away with that but it's just an extra little bit of feature that I felt like was needed for no other good reason too. Now that I'm pretty much done with the blade and the blender side, I end up going in with some Kit Ops EV materials just to kind of get an idea of what it would look like and to show you guys before I take it over to Substance Painter. Unfortunately, I'm not able to record Substance Painter because my computer hates me. Um, but for the most part, I just kind of add some materials to it, slap a couple of decals on it just to get a basic idea of where to go from there. And after I do all that, as I end up taking it in the substance painter and trying to model what it looks like uh, exactly in real life. Wasn't able to make the material of the handle look exactly the same, but I, I felt it came pretty close. Maybe it was a little bit more damaged in, in the 3D model side than my, compared to the real life model. But I was very happy with the end result. Um, I hope you guys are going to be able to enjoy it as well. Just being able to look at it, maybe experiment with some other animations, inspire you to you know, challenge yourself to make the same knife, maybe. Um, I'll be including the alpha stamps that I use to get the nice little rib effect going on the side of the blade, which you'll see uh, with the substance painted version. I'll include that in the pack on Gumroad as well so that you guys can follow along if you'd like to. I used materials in Substance Painter that are native to Substance Painter so I didn't use any bot uh, materials or anything like that too. So if you want to attempt at recreating the Substance Painted version as well, it's really simple. I didn't go too crazy with the design or anything like that. I ended up just using what Substance gave me put a couple of sm uh, smart material or smart masks on it just to make it look pretty good. Now here, uh, I was trying to set up a nice render, but then I realized Hard Ops comes with a nice, you know, turntable. So it's pretty simple. You just select your object, go to the Q menu and add active camera and it gives you this nice animation pretty much set to what your frame rate is. And if you change the frame rate, or you're starting your end frames, it'll adapt to that as well. So I think that's a pretty neat feature that Jerry wanted added in. And it was able to shine really bright. I definitely will be using this option a lot more in the future. Now, coming up, you're going to see Substance Painted version and the fun that I had with some animations. Now, I was talking with a couple of guys and uh, Master Zeon as well. He said, you know, you should add some pretty cool flashy, you know, animations to make it look cooler, supplement the model a little bit. So I took that, put my own twist on it. He told me I should make it fly and slap into a wall. He showed me a way of doing it, and I wasn't able to recreate it. I'll be able to do it in the future probably if I pay more attention. But uh, with just a couple of keyframe inserts, I was able to... You know, make it fly through the air basically and slap into this wall and put a quick quick and dirty disgusting little particle effect that's nothing to write home about but it gives you the general idea and yeah that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoy this video hope you're able to learn from it if you have any questions put it down in the comments below if you'd like to obtain this knife as well as the original blend file and all the materials for it, I'll have a link to the pack on Gumroad. It's 100% free. If you want a tip, you can do that. If not, you know, no cost to you, you'll be able to have this knife as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you on the next one.